The comicsology transition over to being full-time Amazon has not gone smoothly. I haven't really covered it so much here on the channel due to my own personal frustrations. Normally, my videos are somewhat formatted, and there is a method to my madness, but I knew if I got on this topic, I would probably lose my mind, and I would just kind of go on a rant. So I am going to freestyle a little bit here, but I do have a few points that I want to discuss, and the fact that things actually just got worse today. Somehow... The comicsology transition that has screwed over so many people, Amazon have somehow made it worse. I, it, it's shocking to, to think about this, but I can tell you as a comic book reader that's overseas, I do not live in Manila. That is the only city in the country that I live in, the Philippines, that has a comic shop. If I wanted to go buy physical comics, I can't actually do it. I have to have them mailed to me. Because DC and Marvel... Well, I, I guess it's Lunar and, and Diamond, and now Penguin Random House, has have no Asian distribution to speak of. The comic shops that want to carry these books have to have special, like, um, I guess, arrangements made to get the comic books here to actually have them there. So right on the top, as a, a customer of DC and Marvel, I have to pay, if I want physical comic books, I have to pay 20% more off of the cover price just to buy them here the, in the Philippines, which is insane when you think about the average wage that a Filipino worker gets paid compared to an American or European worker. So already, you know, you're, you're pricing out so many customers here in the Philippines, specifically kids and anyone that isn't someone of a pretty decent amount of means here in this country. I do not live in Manila, so there's no comic shop to me. So I have to have it shipped to me. That's an extra $3 for shipping every single week for physical comic books. If you only buy two comic books, is it even worth it kind of thing? So I am completely dependent because of DC and Marvel's strategy with their comic books and their comic book enterprises and the way that they're managing things You know, with their overseas customers. I am essentially completely dependent on Comixology, and that essentially is either by design or by complete stupidity on the fault of Marvel and DC. The fact that they let Amazon, a company so enormous that has zero care about manga, comic books, or whatever, it doesn't matter if you had the highest selling digital comic book in the history of the world, it would never even make an impact on Amazon's bottom line. They could care less about comic books, that they let Amazon, that company, be essentially the primary distributor in vessel for digital comic books for all major North American comic books is absolutely insane to me. The fact that you have these uh, these digital platforms that Marvel and DC have made as competitors, I don't think they're all that competitive. They essentially ceded the market to Amazon, a company that has no interest or long-term vision for comic books, period. That was the first stupid-ass mistake. The fact that they announced that they were going to do this transition to be in full-time Amazon and you no longer have the comicsology like interface and stuff is essentially going to be kind of be Kindle now. They did this well over a year ago. DC and Marvel had so much time to play in for these changes, to inquire, to find out what was going on and perhaps do something about it. Maybe, I don't know, throw a little bit of money in there together, pull it up, maybe get their image in there and try to help out not only themselves, but the rest of the comic book market to prepare themselves for such a massive, massive, enormous change in the digital comic book market. This couldn't have happened at a worse time. And for me personally, it has affected me in so many ways that I, I don't want to get into it because I'm going to be so fucking mad. My tablet actually has a pretty good battery life on it. Now, if I download like two or three comic books and I'm not plugged in and being powered on and that 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 very moment, it will completely zap out everything. I don't know how the files got so big. They take so fucking long. The interface is awful. Comixology wasn't great to begin with. I'm, I'm shocked that they could actually downgrade it to this degree. Now, we did hear on February 25th from Amazon themselves, and they acknowledged that, that mistakes were made and they were going to fix it. This is what they happened to say. We want to take a moment to address the transition to our new app and comics web store experience. We know this process has been far from seamless, and we've heard your feedback. We understand how important improving the web reader experience is and are working as fast as possible to implement those improvements. This is our top priority right now. Their top priority right now is somehow comic books. Obviously, that was from the comicsology section of Amazon or whatever. But yeah, right. I'll believe that when I see it, and we certainly haven't seen that. They know that they fucked this whole thing up. Is there no process to go back? 
Did you just delete everything that was already there? There are so many people that have lost access to comic books. I've heard of people that had spent thousands of dollars on digital comic book collections. And a lot of their comic books were wiped out. And they didn't actually have them all cataloged because it, thousands of dollars worth of, of digital comic books end up being thousands of comic books. Different collections all put in there. The way that they sort things now, the fact that you have to go to fucking Amazon, the website, to buy something for comicsology, it's been very difficult. But I'm somehow managing. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but the Marvel and DC apps are not available overseas. So the, the customers that are most affected by this comicsology transition for DC and Marvel, they're overseas customers and likely you know, people in the, within the industry like reviewers and stuff. I know they're being screwed over too, but they're overseas customers who literally don't have access to Marvel and DC comics. Comicsology was the way that they could still read comic books. It was the way that they could still go out there and get new comics each and every week is completely broken and DC and Marvel had no plan and they have no digital distribution or means of getting to DC and Marvel. It's a, how did we get here? How could Marvel and DC be so stupid and how could fucking Amazon make it worse? Well, it did get worse. You don't know who David Steinberger is. He is the founder of Comixology. Up until today, he was the CEO of Comixology, still working with Amazon. I say former CEO because he's quit. Today, the the one guy that knows comicsology and probably gives a fuck about it actually quit today. Quit today, and apparently at the behest of, of Amazon. This is what David Steinberger, founder and former CEO of comicsology, had to say. It's been a few big weeks, and I have personal news. I've been asked if I'd like to lead a new Amazon-wide initiative. That is too good an opportunity to not take. It was a tough decision but I'm ready for a new entrepreneurial challenge. I will love comics forever, and I will continue to be an advisor to Comixology, to long-term Comixology leaders Tom Ashley and Jeff DeBartolomeo will be managing the team moving forward. Tom and Jeff have been at my side for nine years, and I can't wait to see them execute their ideas for Comixology. I'm extremely confident in Jeff and Tom, the rest of the Comixology leadership team, and the many passionate comics loving employees that strive day in and day out to make everyone on the planet lifelong fans to all my comicsologists i've learned so much from you thank you i can't leave this thread without thanking the creators publishers and fans many of whom are also dear friends that make what we do possible there are too many to thank personally here but without you there is no comicsology so thank you for me it's been an amazing 15 years. It's hard to leave the company I helped start with Johnny Storm and Peter and still love, but I'm excited for the opportunity to explore another passion in my new role. My congratulations to Tom and Jeff. The best is still ahead. Recently, my good friend Gabe got in trouble for saying Stephanie Phillips gave her readers the proverbial middle finger with Harley Quinn number 12, and I cannot read that statement from David Steinberger and feel like I didn't get another middle finger from him as well. Oh, you love the fans so much and you feel so much about comics and comicsology is so important that literally as soon as the app is broken and nothing is working and your dream has been crushed and all the things that you work for have been destroyed, you're taking another opportunity to go do something else at Amazon? I can't imagine a worse response to a situation like this, that to take probably the only person that gives a flying fuck about any of this, or you would assume did, David Steinberger, the person that created Comixology, the person that's been the CEO of Comixology for almost a decade now at Amazon, and they'll just let him quit. Be like, hey, you know what? Times got tough. This isn't exactly the gig I signed up for when Amazon took over the company and gave me a leading role. I'm going to go take another better opportunity somewhere else at Amazon. And I'm sure there are plenty of phenomenal entrepreneurial opportunities at Amazon for someone to go out there and destroy some real entrepreneurs out there that are creating things out there. That's, you know, let's be honest about what Amazon is. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but for him to say he can't thank us fans enough. He can't thank the publishers enough and he can't thank you know, the creators enough. You haven't thanked anybody. 
with this move right here. This is like the ultimate fuck you to everybody. Not to Amazon, who are the ones that really screwed up your baby and all this thing. To everyone that supported Comixology from the first day to this day. That that decided against their better judgment, because I... Perch and I have fucking talked about on the channel how stupid it was and how short-sighted it was to see the entire digital comic book market, which probably has a bigger future than print at this point. If you're looking at the trends within consumers within America, that you know, within you know, 10, 20 years, digital comics will probably be the leading way to read comic books, to seed it to Amazon just from the fucking get-go. And as soon as something bad happens, and comicsology was never fucking perfect. Their guided view, while a good idea, never really worked quite right. It was better to just read it like it was a PDF and like pinch and go and all that stuff if you could. But it still worked. The comicsology that David Steinberger is leaving for a better opportunity as he's giving you and I the fucking finger on the way out the door is an absolute mess. It's unfunctional at this point. It does not work for consumers, and it has absolutely destroyed whatever gains were made during the pandemic. We know that digital sales spiked because people were at home. A lot of people didn't have access to comic shops and stuff like that. And there's a good chance that a lot of people like myself, even if they weren't forced into it, had turned to Comixology as their go-to source, as the new spinner rack for comic books. And for him to leave his creation, his baby, in a state like this, is cowardice. If he wasn't fucking fired, and it doesn't sound like he was, if he wasn't kicked off the team for screwing this up, self, screwing this up himself, when it doesn't sound like he was, it sounds like he decided to take another opportunity. He put enough time and energy into comicsology, and I'll, I will admit, 15 years is a long time to work on a single business venture, especially if it had been bought up by Amazon at one point. Certainly would have been deprioritized. He probably had to fight tooth and nail for any improvements that we've gotten over the last almost decade. I will admit all that stuff. It was working, and a lot of comic book customers, consumers, lifetime readers counted on that app as their means to actually read comic books. For him to leave it like this, I just, it just, it chaps my ass. I'm sorry I'm pissed and I'm sorry I'm ranting, but there's nothing I can do with it. But to leave like this, it just, it tells you. How much you and I, the, the customers for Comixology, were not important. Was Doc right? No, Doc wasn't right. Digital comics are still important. This is still the future of the comic book industry. But he might have been right when he said, you're just reading the comics anyway. So if they screwed you out of thousands of dollars of digital comic books and they can't reproduce them or, or fix whatever it is that was broken, although it sounds like in a lot of cases they can, you know, it's your fault. Because he did warn us, but he's, he's wrong that this isn't important. This is vital to the future of the comic book industry and to have a, a, a mistake of this magnitude and then to walk out the door as soon as you have an opportunity just does not sit right with me. I definitely want to hear from you guys because I have been royally fucked by this comicsology deal. If you would like some more information about conversations we've had about this very thing, about how DC and Marvel were not keeping up with the digital trends, Doc and I had that conversation Maybe you can say he was right. I still think he's wrong, but my God, did they fuck us over.